everybody. <laughs> I've had a couple of requests for new campers to uh, show them how we hook up our camper. And so we have to move it anyway to get it ready for this big camping trip. It is the day before we leave. <gasps> Yeah, so um, yeah, we're gonna do that now. Hopefully um, I can set the camera up in a way that you can actually see what's going on, but let's go. Mm -hmm. Let's go. So while Mike gets the Brahma lock off, I thought I would just walk you through what it is that we need to check and do before we're gonna move the camper because we actually have to kind of maneuver it so that it's pointing down the driveway. We have a crazy narrow driveway. So first thing is we gotta get that wheel lock off so that we can actually move the wheel. The second thing is we have to take up the stabilizers because uh, you don't want those dragging along. That That's a bad thing. Then we need to remove the Proven Industries hitch lock so that we can put the dolly underneath and uh, actually physically move it. So hopefully I can get a good camera set up for you guys so you can see how this is all going to go down. Voila! Um, it's off. <laughs> so Mike's starting to take up the stabilizers. This is really important and it can be one of those things that you get distracted and forget to do, which I have actually done. It'll create a bend in your stabilizer if you try to push the camper when it's down. So uh, yeah, make sure they're up. All right, so before I put this away, I also need to make sure the step's up, which is pretty straightforward. It slides into place. Um, take the chuck out, except we need to rock the camper back first, but we do need to take the chuck out or it's not going anywhere. I would bet money that every person who owns one of these locks that has the lock on the underside, which I understand is like the safer thing to do, is completely waiting for some new version of this lock to be available because it's a total hassle to get underneath and yeah, you know, honestly we have what feels like a gajillion keys associated with the camper so uh my husband is world's most patient man got it. you got it got it awesome let's go over and look at it so i've taken out the hitch pin and now the lock here is to come out this bit so that there we go the proven industries lock comes off um and this is a hassle to take off with the key it's a very good lock which means i can only imagine what it's like to take off without the key and then we also did have there the chains they're connected if you lift this up this bottom piece will fall out we have the chains in here as well which are locked in so they come out so we're ready to move and we're ready to go all right let's yeah. let's move this baby So this is Mike pulling the camper into position on our driveway because it is a little tight. So I'm gonna speed up uh, the video and hopefully what we just did shows up, but um, there's a little tension around <laughs> hooking up the camper and moving it. Mike and I are equally control freaks, maybe? What do you maybe. think, babe? You're a little more. Yeah. Okay. It's the day before we leave. <laughs> Tensions are a little high and I have to get back ah. in for a meeting. So I think we've accomplished what we set out to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good for us. <laughs> okay. Let me just run through that again. So it's very clear what you have to do when you're going to hook up your camper. The first thing you have to do is remove your wheel lock. The second thing you have to do is put, take up your stabilizers or check to make sure that they're not down. And then the third thing is you remove your lock, your hitch lock. Once you've done that, you're gonna have your camper in position and you're gonna be ready to actually hook it up to the car. And that's what's coming next. 
it's not that we're super dedicated to doing these videos. We actually have to get the car hooked up to go first thing in the morning on our trip. And I just wanted to show you, that's the first thing that needs to go on. Hold on. So well done. <laughs> He did a slight adjustment. It didn't get much better than that. Not in rain. Good All right. Job. Hey, who's the best? Uh, you. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> All right, let's get this thing going. There we go. So that flywheel is off. Yes. Now, yep. looking oh, good, Mr. Preston. Yep. So all that's left now is to put the, the pin into the, <laughs> the flip lock thingy, which name escapes me right now, and then get the chains on. And so the chains are gonna go down there. We have little carboner rings for those to go on. So this stops the latch here from jumping up. Very simple. Easy. Yeah. And then you've got to make sure you don't forget to take this with you. <laughs> you do, you, you won't be unhooking at all. Yeah. Oh. Or you could put a piece of wood under it, but yeah, not quite as uh, mobile. Okay. Sure. All right. So now it's just the chains and we're good to go. It's raining. Yeah. Not only is it raining, but as we were showing you how we were getting everything done, <laughs> Uh, we kind of forgot that our chains are like twice as long as they need to be. So we've done something that I have no idea if it's a good idea or not. Of course it is. What'd you say? Of course it is. Yeah. They're, do they're just double back. Yeah. So we're, we're unified in the disaster that may be coming or it's going to be a brilliant idea and we're going to be fine. <laughs> so we connected this to the emergency brake, which we connected into one of the spools here. So and that, that has just to be can't loose. be too tight, yeah. yeah, yeah. You don't want it to jam. And then this, um, which is probably a little loose, so we'll turn it around a bit. Maybe we don't need to actually, no, maybe not. That needs to go into the electrical thing here, which I'll be able this to This is see. a seven pin harness. A seven pin, yeah. That I generally find goes at the top. It'll go in most ways, but this will be the most success. All right. Um, I think, you know, we should have wrapped it a bit first. So what just happened was that we had it plugged in. Mike went to test the brake lights and they didn't work. Oh, that's working, babe. They're both lit up now. So as Mike calls it, you have to do the magic jiggle. Okay, that's a left blinker. Right blinker. Emergency lights. Yep, we're good. <laughs> So here's what you should have observed from all the stuff we just did, which is that never ever do this in the dark. Or the rain, if you can help it. Or the rain, if you can help it. But we're ready to go. Mission accomplished. You gotta get those chains sorted. <laughs> <laughs> okay, my hair looked like a lot better <laughs> in the first half of this video. Um, that was a little bit challenging because of the weather. So let me just break down pretty quickly for you what it was that you saw. So once the camper was in position, Michael backed up the car so that we could figure out, did we need to raise or lower the hitch on the camper so that you could get the ball um, on, from the car uh, hitch uh, positioned correctly underneath it. So I used that crank to raise the, the trailer and then Michael backed it up, cut it perfectly underneath. And then with him just kind of maneuvering the end of the hitch over that ball a little bit more clearly, I cranked the wheel that brought the hamper down and then it dropped the flywheel off when I was, uh, when it was completely lowered. So that's kind of the, the fundamentals of how you get the camper connected to the car. And it's a little challenging on our driveway because it's at a, a bit of an angle and it's, you know, not, a, not a good surface. So if it looked harder than it needed to be, it was because of our driveway. Um, once you've got that done, you're going to, um, put the clamp on so that the, um, the hitch lock is, is down, you put in the pin, and then you're going to get your um, chains connected. Hopefully they aren't too long on your rig. They are definitely too long on our rig. And then you're going to make sure that the brake cable is connected. And I've written an article about that, uh, I think. I will put a link to that down below. 
and then you put in the um, power to connect the power from the car to the camper. Now, there is a brake controller that we have that we chose not to use for the first part of the trip. I'm not sure if we're gonna regret that or not. I don't think we will. We never used a brake controller with the HC1. Um, so we'll see. I've got it with us in case we feel like we need it. And then, and that's got an app. It's a whole, it's a whole thing on, unto itself. So we'll cover that in a different video. But yeah, once we had the brake um, controller, uh, sorry, not the brake controller. Once we had the seven pin connector connected from the camper to the car, at that point, you do the thing you always do, which is you test everything out before you think about going anywhere, right? So that's why I was behind the camper, making sure that I was shouting out that we looked good for all of the lights that we needed to make sure were working. Don't just te test like the brake lights and then s assume you're good because we've actually had scenarios where like one light was working, but the other wasn't. And it was just because it needed the magic jiggle. So I hope this was helpful. Please like and subscribe and let me know if there's any other videos you'd like us to do on how we do things. And maybe when the, the weather's better, it'll be a little bit clearer. And if there was like one part of this that wasn't clear, please leave a comment and I'll create a little video that's specific to that. I hope it helps. Take care.